So we have another classic game. We just got done with the Jugs and Phenoms, which was an incredible game. If you didn't see it, watch that video. Now we have the Whippets and Whip Inc. Both teams are 1-0. I'm Nick Schaefer, joined by Tim Cook. So Tim, this is, I'm expecting another high quality game here. Yeah, so this is, you know, an another one, the Whippets uh, Final Four in 2020 and 2021 uh, with Inc. Uh, final, did they make Final Four last year? No, no, Final Eight last yeah, year. Yeah, they lost to the drugs. Yeah, and um, they're going with Dan Whitener early. I mean, with Inc. Scott, you know, Whitener and Mike Styles are two of the premier pitchers in the sport. Whippets are going to go with... Uh, uh, pitching for the Whippets will be Pete uh, oh, oh, Tatum. 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 Yep. He pitched the first game too, Tim, so they said uh, they want to ride him. Um, he pitched very well the first game. They beat the Billy Park Long Balls 12 0, I think it was. So Whippets are the away team, and Whip Inc. is the home. So leading off for the Whippet, Sylvie Serrano, it's one ball, no strikes. Dan Whitener on the mound for with Inc. Whitener's an elite pitcher, Tim, every year. I'm surprised they're going to this early, but they probably want to get uh, their record, you know, go for that 2-3-0 record right away. Yeah, I mean, I think that's part of the consequence of, uh, you know, uh, Losing Connor Young and uh, you know, getting rid of him like they did, they you know I imagine he would be pitching in this uh, spot. So you know, it, it, if it's uh, if it doesn't go their way, you know, it, it, is it self-inflicted? If it goes their way, you know, you don't Good shot really, yeah, you don't really think about it. So exactly, and we have a unique view here. You probably see on the screen. This is the outfield fence that you can see in the bottom part of the screen. Uh, the red, the yellow stripe on top. So. We're bringing you from a unique location. Tim and I are sitting in the stands, actually. So you might hear some music in the background. You might see some players walk by. We want to do, try a different angle so the viewers can see uh, the pitcher from the inside part and the batter's view. So here's Whitener's 3-1 pitch. Swing in the foul tip by Sylvie. So full count. I think one thing's for sure here if... Um, you know, the Whippets can put up runs. With Inc's got a premier hitter in Kenny Rogers Jr. The Whippets have Randy Dalby. Um, it's just all right. It's, it's like swing and a miss from so. so one of the cool things about the Whippets, uh, Tim, a good fact is this is the third annual UF championship. They're the only team, the Whippets, to make it to two Final Fours. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And Randy last year won the Ironman Award. I don't know. He pitched 30-something innings, I think it was. Maybe more or not even. It was ridiculous. So one down, here's Randy Dalby. Swing and a miss at a high riser. For some reason, like, I think everybody respects the Whippets and they know they're good, but when you talk about the two or three teams that can win it, I don't know why they don't make it on the list. They, they're throwing a little bit of the outskirts. I definitely put them in the list of top five teams that can win the championship. Yeah, I think a little bit of it is, yeah, just, uh, you know, age. And, I, and just like, you know, I probably a little bit of East Coast bias. Yeah, oh, that's a good point. I mean, and we didn't bring this up, but uh, the Whippets added Jim Valiant, and he's a, he had a decent historic uh, career for Liverpool. Ball. Jim won back-to-back um, -back titles in the early 2000s with the Vipers. Uh, 2000, 2002, USPPBA, and 2003, Fast Blast. Well, I would say he's one of the, uh, the modern-day greats of the sport in the last 20 years. You're adding a player like Jim to already a powerful squad led by Randy too, and it's like a, this is a this is a very tough team to be here. Both these teams have high high aspirations, and last year they both made it uh, really far in tournament. Whip it to the final eight and whip it to the final four. So Whitener took just a little bit off his slider there, and that was enough to freeze Dalby. So two down. Pete Tayton uh, batting now. He's also on the mound. So Whitener gets ahead 0-1. Good riser. And then we have Peter Mockaby up next. So Pete to Peter. Next two batters. Whitener has, like, 
easy gas. And, I, and just like we did last game, Tim, we were watching uh, Ray pitch, Ray Wintick pitch for Juggernauts. Whitener also has a background of uh, pitching. Um, yeah, in fact, he, so in college, you know, he pitched, and I, I believe more from like a three-fourths angle, like a Michael Givens type. Uh, like a sidearm type Yeah, thing. Not, not like a full submarine like Darren O'Day, but uh, definitely a lower release point. So yeah, he's, he's, he's got plenty of experience. He knows what he's doing. That's why I think those pitchers, when you bring it from the collegiate level to football ball, you just have a good game plan. One of the things I would say um, the Whippets do well too is they grind both, you know, throughout the whole tournament and they don't beat themselves. Uh, so I think that's one of the, the reasons why they go far in tournaments too. I mean, they can just flat out hit. I mean, they, yeah. they, they, they put runs up. Well, last year I remember they, every time he turned around, they were getting another base hit in the Black Dog Country Club. Yeah, that was a really good pitch. Did it hit the, hit the yeah. bottom corner? Yeah. So. Whitener gets him one, two, three, go to the bottom of the second, at uh, bottom of the first, with ink coming up. So I, I guess that was called a ball. So. Yeah, after discussion, Tim looked again at discussion. They called it a ball, so it's a walk, actually. Oh. Out here, it looked actually, like a... Well, at first they called it a strike, and then I saw them discussing it. So sorry, viewers. Uh, they decided that somebody had a good view on the side and said they hit the pipe, not the strike zone. So here's Peter Mockaby. Sorry about that. We fixed it. So it's been our first two outs now. Peter Mockaby at the plate. So remember, folks, uh, a clean double scores are on here in the advance. So Whiffing playing two back with Kenny Rogers Jr. in second base side. Whitener took it easy this summer. He played in the MAW Ocean City tournament with POC, but other than that, he has not uh, has not played a ton, so his arm theoretically should be a little bit fresher. Paints the outside corner. Yeah, the only thing I would worry about is sometimes when he's in tournaments, he will feel something in his elbow or shoulder, I guess, and he smartly takes himself out. So let's hope we have no problems with him this tournament. A fully healthy Dan Whitener is, is an elite pitcher. I've always enjoyed his leg kick. He does generate a lot of his power and momentum with his legs, too. Same situation that we were saying with Ray would take as well from the Cubs. So both these teams desperately want to go 2-0. This is important for them. It helps set up their their day. It makes things a lot easier to go 2-0 as opposed to 1-1. One one. Swing and a miss. I always think having a, 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 a couple lefties in the lineup too, or, or a lefty, just helps balance out the lineup and gives you a different look to the pitcher too. I think it's a good thing. So, Markaby walks, so first and second, two down. Man, imagine this inning goes from they thought they were out of it, to now it's first and second, two outs. So here's Jim Ballion. So as we said earlier, Jim has basically won every award as an individual and as a team throughout his historic career. And we are very uh, grateful to have him be a part of UF this year. One of, one of the better players that's ever put on a uniform, too. Great guy, bulldog, still a very good player, too. It's amazing after all these years. But more importantly, he's batting in an important situation here. White Arrow looking to get out of the inning. Jin looking to give his team the lead. What kind of bat is he using here, Tim? Come on! Can you tell? I mean, I think it's a moonshot. I just think it's got a different color at the bottom. It definitely doesn't look like a it definitely looks like a moonshot. 
First and second, two outs. Clean single scores a run. Swing and a miss. Two strikes on Ballion here. Let's see what Whitener goes with, because he does have an excellent off-speed pitch to him. One of the better off-speed pitches in the game. Oh, inner corner. Whitener walking, it struck out the first two guys, walked the next two, and then struck out Ballion looking. So the end of the top of the first, 0-0. Zero, zero. We're heading to the bottom of the second. And the, uh, yeah, bottom of the first. Bottom of the first, I'm sorry, yeah. And uh, whip ink coming to the coming to bat. There you go. So a couple quick score updates while we're here. Stompers and WSEM, I believe we're in the fourth, no score. Over on field three. That's a battle. Let's see, what else? Who else is playing? Got the North Stars, the opposite field here, but I can't tell who they're playing over there. The North Stars are playing, uh, are playing the uh, With His Life. Oh, okay. So the With Inc. lineup, you got Kenny, Rogers, Dan Whitener, Mike Stiles, and Anthony Didio. Uh, tough lineup, and especially with Kenny being one of the game's premier hitters. Right off the, the bat, they put one of the top hitters leading off. On the mound for a second straight game uh, for the Whippets is Pete Tayton. Pitched your first game, they beat the long balls 12-0. Got Ballion playing first base side. I like the idea. It's sort of like baseball, Tim, where in football now people are putting their best hitter first, at the very least second. You don't you don't try to bat anybody fair anymore. You want to get them up as many times as possible. Yep. And Kenny batting leadoff. I mean, he gets on base, huge on base percentage, good slugging percentage. He sets the whole thing up. I also think it adds high stress pitches right away for the pitcher, so it kind of starts to wear on them right away. Oh, ground ball, third base side. Gets a single. Can't make the play, so now first. That was a tough play, especially going from grass to dirt right there, too. There's Dan Whitener. So early in his career, Whitener was, you know, known almost, I'd say, 95% as a pitcher. Um, and I think over the years, he's developed into a, a real solid bat, almost a sneaky bat. Yeah. Um, he's got he's got a lot of power and uh, quick wrists, I would say too. Yeah. And gets, like again, he's a, he's you know pitched in college, but I think he also I mean he definitely hit through high school, but I think he also hit a little bit in college. So like he's he's got that pedigree. He knows he knows what he's doing. I think early on, Tim too, when he was known for more just pitching, is he wanted to make himself a more complete player, so he worked at his craft. So it looks like the actual foul ball there. So it looks like WSEM defeats the Stompers. That was a big game for both teams too yeah. over there. So WSEM will go to two and zero on the day. Stompers will go to one and one. Challenges uh, Whitener at the top of the zone there.
Good high pitch by Tate in there. Tries an inside screwball there. Stayed, stayed inside and high. Gets him swinging. Good pitch. That one was good because it stayed inside, but it wasn't high. So he got the, the batter to swing at it. Got one out and a first. Styles at the plate. Swing and miss by Styles. Styles, um, he's similar to Whitener. He just started his fast pitch career in uh, 2021. And um, so he's a great pitcher, and his hitting has come along. Like, boom, he's hit in the face, so first and second here. Yeah, it's the third time I've seen somebody get hit in the head in the last three games. They got a walk out of it. Actually, can make. Uh, correction, uh, Stompers beat WSEM 1-0, so they go to 2-0. That's a huge win for the Stompers, starting out the tournament 2-0. So we got first and second, one out, ground ball ground to ball the third. Get two. Let's see if they can turn, Valiant at second, you got one. And Just misses it. So it was first and second, fielder's choice. No, no, I think it's second and third. Well, now it's second and third, yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So two down, second and third. Well, he got one uh, from the Whippets' point of view. You know, you, you like to turn two, but now it's second and third with two outs. Tim, a clean single now scores two, so this is a huge at-bat coming up. Yeah, I would actually like to do Kenny's at the gonna, point. They're not going to play three in. Yeah, again, this would be the this would be the time, too, because a double is going to – a double doesn't matter. Single yeah. Matters, but. And to say this, like – you just brought up a good point before with Whitener hitting a lot more. If he wasn't hitting a lot more, Tim, this is where you might pitch around Kenny and face take your chances with Whitener. But now, because Whitener is a solid hitter, you don't necessarily do that. And Line drive Kenny, shot by Kenny. Oh, just Ooh, foul. just foul. That would have been a double off the fence and, clear, and he scored two runs. A bullet down the left field line. He turned that inside pitch, he roped it. And now Ballian and, and Tatner are talking strategy here. You almost don't want Kenny to turn, like, get his, extend his hands, but extend, extend his arms, but you also, he's very quick inside. Yeah, well, and that's... I, that's oh, challenge him there. I mean, Kenny's biggest, A little extra juice. Kenny's biggest thing, I think, is, yeah, he's, he is able to reach out and cover so much of the plate with power. It's yeah. not that he's, you know, it, he's not like... It's coming from the outside corner and he's just weakly popping up to first. He's, you know, he, he's able to hit all those pitches. Good take there. Yeah, he reminds me of, like, if you are doing a, a comp here for baseball, major leagues to wiffle ball, he's sort of like judgish, you know, Aaron judgish. He can reach the outside corner and turn on the inside pitch, too. I'm sure Kenny will appreciate that comp. Is he a Yankee fan? I don't know. Either way, you might appreciate it. <laughs> <'Cause>, um, <laughs> oh, that's true. Judge and Seuss, but yeah, I don't know All if right, he is. So the bases are loaded. <laughs> no, I think he's just adjusting his hat. No, he just, never mind. He's resetting. I think you, you've seen that. I think the, the wind picked up for a second there, too. Oh, oh so good pitch by Tim. Out, out of corner, Tim. What a big time pitch that was. He escapes his second and third jam to hold with fake to zero. So at the end of one, we have a 0-0 zero, zero game heading to the top of the second. It's coming to the point.
Heading to the top of the second here, Sylvie leading off, followed by Randy, Pete, and then Peter, and then Jim. So Whippets had uh, two guys on base in the first inning. They had two walks. Tim, both both teams had two guys on uh, two runners on base and they didn't get a run across. Yeah, well, uh, like like we talked about earlier, I mean the Whippets, you know, put up a ton of runs. Whip Inc. has the capability to put up runs. Yeah. I don't expect this to go, although I'll well, probably say jinx it now. Yeah. I don't expect this to go scoreless into extra. No. I think I think both teams might put up cross runs here. That being said, there's two excellent pitchers on the mound too, so. The Whippets had first and second in the first and didn't score, and the Whiff Inc. had second and third in the first and did not score. Whitener painting the outside corner there. That motion throws you off. He has his, his leg extended, and you think it's going like inside and kind of hides the ball. It gets up on you fast. That's yeah, for sure. I think I, I, I'll be interested to see like if the hitters take. A, it's hard to pick up the ball on him. Swing and a miss. Might hit the zone. So yeah, he's he's really keeping it low too. That's the bottom part of the uh, strike zone. Two strikes here. Ooh, very aggressive swing there, two strikes especially. Looks like you saw that pitch well. Just underneath it. A little bit of a of breeze blowing out on this field. Yeah, I wonder if there's gonna be a pop up if we'll carry it out. White your misses outside, so. Wenders, uh, very, this game so far, I know it's early, he's really trying to paint the hour corner and the lower part of the zone, which is smart. Stay away from natural power zones of the hitters. And he Ooh. went. He went. It looks like he said he went. He got one out. That's a pitcher's call anyway with football, right? Yeah. And that bat extended to the zone. No doubt about it. Randy up for his second at bat. His first at bat uh, struck out looking. Can't tell what bat he's using, what style. Yeah, he's using a walk off bat. Oh, okay. a really light one. Yeah, that bat is like feather uh, light. So I heard some people, Tim, say it's almost too light for some hitters. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's by far the lightest. I mean, I, honestly, it feels lighter than the yellow bat. Um, Do you foresee a day that maybe um, with football tournaments that they they tell you what kind of bats are, are fine to use, maybe which ones they, they don't want you to use? Or no, not, not at all. No, I mean, you know, that, that's already happened once. And um, yeah. it was during the USPPBA in 2001, 2002. And it, there's Whitener's uh, patented crazy uh, off-speed pitch. And that ended up not working out. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, it all depends on how things grow and how how everything's set up. But right yeah. now, I don't think we're near that point. Whitener's knee buckling off speed pitch. Uh, he's buckled a lot of knees over the years. Gets Randy's th there for a K. Two outs. Tayton coming up, trying to help himself. So Whitener's having a little bit more efficient inning, but last inning he struck out the first two guys before he walked the next two. So he wants to change uh, that for this inning. Swing and a miss. Yeah, Whitener's really locating well right now. Yeah, he's not just throwing hard and hit the zone, he's actually picking good spots. Yeah, the, the breeze has uh, picked up around here. Oh, deep fly ball oh, center field. Didio's got it. Got it. It kind of died down a little bit. Maybe it was off the end of the bat, but uh, I thought it might have had a chance, but he got it about, what, maybe a foot before the wall? Yeah, and I, it didn't sound like he got the, you know, the barrel exactly. Yeah, it, it didn't have that great sound to it. So at first, it looked like it might go over, but then sort of was dying out as it got closer to the wall. And Didio just ran, and he was smart. He ran right back to the wall, stopped, was nice and calm, made a clean catch. 
go to the bottom of the second, no score. Coming up for Whiff Inc., you got Whitener, followed by Mike, Anthony, and then Kenny Femini gets on. So here we go, bottom two. White here leading off, aggressive first pitch swing. People are looking for that first pitch, Tim. They're not looking to take a pitch and they don't want to go behind the count, so they're looking for a pitch to hit and no matter what the count is, they're going after it. Inside, one ball, one strike. Oh, foul ball right side. That had a good sound, and, uh, but it was, off, it was swung very late there. Good location by Tate in the outer corner of the plate. If it would have drifted over more towards the middle, Whitener probably could have did damage with it, but outer, outer part of the plate. Two strikes here. Tate, good pitch, dropped down, middle of the zone. Gets Whitener striking out looking, or striking out swinging. Styles coming to the plate here. One out, nobody on. Bomb two. As we keep saying, whoever wins this game, this is why it's a big game, their path to getting deep in the playoffs is slightly easier than if you go one-on-one. -on -one. You recording? Yeah. You're good. So Styles, like you're talking about, he's hitting, you know, uh, greatly improved. Uh, he's, Ooh, hit he's the top part of the zone. He's a guy who's got a ton of power. Um, I think he hit, he hit at least two walk-off home runs in MAW this year. And he's, you know, we can't measure exit velocities, obviously, but he hits the ball as hard as anyone when he makes contact. That being said, they go down strike on strikes there, got two outs. Uh, one thing I noticed, Tim, too, is they, they flip flop. Bally is now on the bench, and Dalby's playing uh, infield. Oh, that's interesting. I don't, you know, I didn't. Oh, I, I assume actually so that was probably made because of the failed double play. Yeah, you're right. Earlier in the game, you know, it's a game of inches. You can't you can't waste it. Swing and a miss. Good pitch. And that was potentially a huge play. I mean, Whippets got out of it, but it went from the inning over to second and third. Tatum's really having an effective inning here. He's hitting all parts of the strike zone, in and out, up and down. Deep fly ball as it kicks to home run center field. A blast. Didio hits a bomb to center. It just kept going dead center, too. They, to give Whiff Inc. a 1 nothing lead. So, as I was just saying, Tatum's pitching a great game. 
The next pitch, of course, it's uh, Didio hits a bomb to give his team a one nothing lead. Get the run jump started here. And that turns the lineup over for Kenny Rogers Jr. And yeah, that uh, that went out three rows into the stands and. If we're going from where the fence is, there could be another three rows, so six rows deep. That was a no doubt a great pitch on the inside corner. Yeah, that one just tains that pitching very well, but you know, mistake pitch and Didio did not miss it. Quick hands and dead center. When, you, when somebody goes to dead center, usually you know you're right on the ball. Yeah, so sometimes it is a game of inches. Tatum throws that in or out a couple inches, that's probably not a home run. Pitcher and batter discussing whether he went there. That's one of the cool things about football. Usually it's a very much a gentleman's game where 99.9% .9 of the time you talk about it. Foul back, catcher hells on there, but Whiff Inc. scores a run, take a one nothing lead on an Anthony Didio solo shot. We're heading to the bottom of the second. No, uh, top of the top third. Top of the third, my bad. Top of the third, one nothing, Whiff Inc. Top of the third here. Remember, we play four inning games in, in these rounds. One nothing with Ink. And you got Peter Mockaby leading off here for Whippets. Yeah, so, so far, Whitener's been very efficient. You know, the two walks in the first inning, uh, but he came out throwing the strikes in the second. Anything to keep the pitch count down and not have to use, you know, more energy than needed. Oh, good cut. You can see the, right there. the breeziness on the players. Their uniforms moving, Whitener's shorts are moving too, so you can see it is picking. It's not bad, but it's just a little breezy. Good cut there by Maccabee. Nice lefty swing. Whoa, line drive to the left field, foul. So they had two uh, line drives that are just foul. Well, Kenny hit one earlier too. So speaking of lefty swings, if you haven't seen it, Go back and watch the um, the home run that Stan hit the walk off against the Phenoms. It hit the left field wall past the home run mark, which is a shot. Um, one of the bigger blasts you'll ever see in a competitive football game. Good take. Oh, really good take. He's seen it well, Tim. You can tell. Yeah. There's the two swings he had, the takes. He seems very confident at the plate right now. Mockerby had a walk from one of his bats, so it tells you he's seeing uh, Whitener well. Oh, oh, out of the part of the zone. Just a good pitch. Yep. It's a different cap. So there's Jim Ballion. Whitener got Ballion, uh, struck him out looking last at bats. Swing and a miss. So, I 
like Nick mentioned last time, Jim Valiant, 2002, 2003 champion with the Vipers. Just an all-time great team. Yeah, one of the best teams ever. One nothing with me. Any? Top of three. Oh, sidearm there, uh, Tim. You mentioned he would sidearm a little bit in college, and he goes a little bit deep sidearm on that pitch for a different look. Bite your nose when you face these guys for second, third, fourth time through the lineup. You, sometimes you do change it up. Maybe it goes a little bit more off speed pitches sometimes. He's thrown one off speed uh, pitch so far. Down and away. That's a good veteran uh, at bat so far by Bowling taking that pitch. Counts in his favor. Obviously, uh, you know, the age in any sport, you lose a little bit of ability. But also, you, it doesn't, you do factor in that he has a lot of intelligence and from all of his years playing and leadership, so that helps offset some of that. Now, yeah, Lightyear misses low, so Valiant walks, so man on first one now. Great AB by Jim there. To, uh, first pitch strike, and then he worked a walk. So, man on first, got Sylvie up. What's Sylvie done today? Sylvie has two strikeouts so far in his two at, two at bats. Might are losing the zone a little bit here. He does once in a while like all pitchers, but usually Whitener is a, a very much, you know, doesn't lose it for too long when he does. Ground foul. Sylvie was on that quick hands, but he pulled a, pulled a foul almost behind him. You got the weird part of the ball where it, it didn't taco it, but it, yeah, it, it definitely dented it. That's the thing with this sport too. Like a hard ball is not going to dent, you know. But uh, wiffle balls will do it sometimes, or if you hit it in the holes, it depends. It's all weirdness. Oh, here's a fly ball to center, and Didio makes a nice diving catch. So Didio with the home run and then a nice catch in the outfield. All around player, Tim. Doing it with the bat, doing it with his Didio. glove. Didio. Down first. Man first, two out. Goal we got to play here. So it wasn't necessarily hit hard, Tim, but it was a four. It went straight in the, uh, down the middle of the uh, behind second base. So Didio had to read it and yeah. know whether to come in or out. He made a good two steps and then a, a short dive. And we're at a weird, not a weird time, but we're, you know, a little bit before one o'clock here. This, you know, it's a blue, clear sky. On this field, you're looking into some clouds, so seeing it come off the bat, especially with all these fields around it, is, you know, can be a little bit challenging. So Randy up here, Randy so far has, he has two strikeouts. He's a dangerous hitter at the plate. Last uh, two tournaments, uh, you with, he's had a lot of clutch hits. People think about his arm, he's had a lot of clutch hits too. Come on. Oh, ball exploded right, up in the zone. Whitener escapes the inning, so we're heading to the bottom of the third, 1-0 with Inc.
All right, so it's interesting here. Uh, Jim Bentley's back out into the field. Maybe they're just going every other end. Yeah, they're alternating. Now, now Randy's playing the outfield. Yeah, so yeah, they just get everybody different looks at different positions early on. So you're ready come later in the tournament. So Whitener swings and misses 0-1. So remember, he's a four inning games. We're in the bottom of the third. one nothing with Inc. Both these teams at the moment are 1-0. Really desperately trying to get to that 2 0 mark to set themselves up for a tournament. Out off. In on the hands, that ball really came in. If, that, if this isn't major leagues, that hurts your hands. Wiffle ball, it could sting a little bit, but nothing like, uh, like baseball. That ball just broke in, cut in. Oh, sidearm drop by Tayton. Give him a different look. Really just kind of flattened out, it didn't, have, didn't really do anything there. Ball foul, first base side. So I feel like Tim that the Whippets, you know, are just they, they need a, some momentum changing play to get them energized, to get them going. Do you feel that too? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, and they're just, you know, if, if he's able to swing it, like so uh, you know, that's the quicker they get back into the dugout, the quicker they get a chance to get some base runners, try to get a run across there. I feel like wiffle ball is one of the key aspects. It is energy. It's all about because a lot of big plays in wiffle ball that turn the game. And that home run, obviously, by Didier was a big moment. But the Whippets are needing their own moment, whether it's a great catch or a big single, double, whatever it may be. Well, I think it's you know it, it's about keeping a good energy you know throughout, even when you you know aren't producing you know like you know you can you know shaking off the last of bat and say all right let's you know, shake that off. Get going again. Yeah, it has a lot of failure, wiffle ball. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, Hi. baseball's a game of failure. Wiffle ball's a game of extreme failure. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. You have to be able to bounce back and just learn from every at bat or every every pitch you throw or mistake in the field. I mean, Tate's pitching a very good game. I'm very impressed. It was just that one pitch that. And I, I feel like I take responsibility because I was, I was talking about how great he was doing. The next pitch was a home run. <laughs> but uh, he's going in and out, picking his spots, different pitches. Swinging him with my styles. So we got two outs. Kenny uh, Didio coming to the plate. And Didio has produced the, the, the big moment of this game, as we said, the home run to center field. Actually, not too far from where Tim and I are sitting right now. He also made a good catch. So he's had, he has the defensive moment of the game and the hitting moment of the game. Good pitch by Tayton, using Didio's aggression against him. Somebody got a big hit in the field. The home run over to the dugout, first base dugout. That was crushed. You see some bombs today. Very effective hitting by Tayton. Yeah, so he did what he needed to do, get him back up. And Three straight strikeouts. So the Whippets need one to keep it going, two to uh, bring it to bring it to the bottom of the fourth. So we head to the top fourth, one nothing with him. Have pitching now. They should have made it easy. Yeah. All right, so we hit to the top of the fourth here. 
Murphy Tatum leading off. Dan Whitener gets ahead with a nice drop pitch. And Tim, we were just talking about uh, last year the uh, Whippets lost their first game, so they started 0 1 and made it through. So even if they don't, I mean, this game is not over, it's 1 0, but even if they were to go down here, it's not. It's, they oh, still it have a good, good yeah, chance. It's hardly the end of the day. They're built for a long, long uh, tournament. Swing and a miss. Whitener's ball is exploding. Uh, starts in the middle of the strike zone, then just explodes out of the strike zone. With, with a high velocity, it's hard to even do anything with that. It's easy to say as a viewer, oh, take, why is he taking that pitch? I mean, it's, it's, it's tough. We haven't seen, I mentioned this earlier in the game, Tim, we haven't seen many off-speed pitches from Whitener. He's only, I think, on my count, he's only thrown one this game. Maybe he doesn't feel comfortable with it, or he doesn't think he needs to use it. But he does have a devastating knee buckling off speed pitch. Swing and a miss, so one down. Peter Mockaby coming up, and then after that, we got Ballion. One out. Peter had a good at bat, uh, his last at bat. He struck out, but he had two good hard hit foul balls, if you remember, and good swing, good looking swings. So I think he's seen the ball well. With things playing him to pull. Outer part of the zone there. That's a good pitch. The only chance you have there is if you're looking out there, but Peter's looking for something to drive. And he's batting off the plate too, so he's looking for something inner part, middle of the plate. And Whitner knows that, he's trying to paint the outside again. One ball, one strike. It looks like the wind's going from left to right, Tim, so I think you have, have to hit it pretty well to hit it out. Slightly in, maybe. It's an unofficial weather forecast. I'm looking at the flags in center field to see where it's blowing. Swing and a miss. Peter had the right idea, though. Like, um, it just stayed low. Yet, you know, that's the pitch you might be looking for if it was a little higher. Mock could be down to his last strike here. Whippets down to their last out, Ballion coming to the plate. He did work a walk his last at bat. And Whippink is one out away from going 2 0. Whitener has one ball, two balls have been put in play, two fly balls in center field, and he has two walks. Other than that, it's all K's. Ball one to Ballion. Sometimes that can affect the pitcher with the ball. I mean, oh yeah, different. Wind cuts differently through those eight holes. Yeah, it affects your pitchers differently too. Oh, oh that was nasty. You can't do anything against that pitch. <laughs> Hit the black of the strike zone. Jim's like cracking up. He's like, "What the heck? What am I supposed to do with that?" Talking to his teammates, especially early in the count, you don't even offer at that pitch. Yeah, no, that's... it's not a drivable pitch. Inner part of the strike zone, two strikes. So Whippets down to their final strike. Whitener getting a little, getting pumped out here. He knows how big the situation is. It's a big difference being one on one and two zero. -on. Oh, strike going. Strikes him out looking. Whip Inc goes to two zero with a one nothing victory over the Whippets. The Whippets fall to one on one. Big game, Tim, and the one, the one big moment of the game was Didio's solo shot to center field. Yep, that was uh, another great, uh, really good game. We will uh, be back later on. Um, as always, keep tuning in. Um, a bunch of teams are streaming their games. The official, our official streams will, you know, continue into later tonight. And then tomorrow, we'll be on the York Revolution YouTube page with a uh, multi-camera uh, you know, uh, shoot for the quarterfinals, semifinals.